Hello everyone and welcome again. So continuing our discussion about antibiotics, now we are going to talk about the chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol is the, from the amphenicol class uh, and it is the only drug in its class that is used in humans. The other agents are used in veterinary medicine. In humans they cause severe aplastic anemia so they are not used for that reason and the chloramphenicol also causes aplastic anemia but to a lesser degree uh, and it was first discovered in the 1949 and uh, it is used for 30 years uh, to treat the typhoid fever but then its use decreased because of the emergence of better alternatives uh, that cause lesser side effects than the chloramphenicol does uh, but the chloramphenicol does come in exam questions uh, so that's why we are going to discuss it today and in this video we are going to talk about the pharmacokinetics the mechanism for action the spectrum the resistance the therapeutic uses and the adverse effects of the chloramphenicol so let's start so let's start by talking about the pharmacokinetics of the chloramphenicol and with the pharmacokinetics we always talk about the ADMI we start with the A which stands for administration uh, the chloramphenicol is available as uh, oral and IV formula uh, the oral formula has a very good absorption uh, because of the low molecular weight of the chloramphenicol and also because of the good lipid solubility of the uh, chloramphenicol this would make the oral formula has very good absorption but it is not used because it causes high toxicity compared with the IV formula so uh, the oral formula is not used uh, because it causes higher uh, toxicity than the IV formula does uh, and the most used one is the IV formula let's talk about uh, distribution so the molecular weight uh, of the uh, chloramphenicol is 323 uh, and it uh, has good crossing of the blood-brain barrier or good penetration through the blood-brain barrier so it has good concentration in the cerebrospinal fluid and it is good for treating meningitis so good uh, penetration to blood-brain barrier And it also has good penetration to body fluids. So good uh, penetration uh, to body fluids like uh, pleura, prostate, uh, and the other fluids. Uh, it also uh, it also has a good crossing to, through the placenta uh, and. The, into the breast milk uh, so good cross crossing into uh, or through uh, placenta uh, and uh, breast milk and it is not teratogenic uh, but it causes a gray baby syndrome when it is used in late pregnancy or in, child, in children less than two years and we will talk about the gray baby syndrome in the adverse effects of this uh, lecture yeah so that's about the distribution for the metabolism the chloramphenicol is metabolized by phase 2 metabolism 
uh, by the glucuronidation. So glucuronidation process, it metabolizes the chloramphenicol uh, and the glucuronidation is uh, not efficient in kids less than two years. So not efficient in uh, kids less than two years. For the excretion, it is excreted uh, by the kidney. So excreted by uh, the kidney into inactive metabolites. So it does not work on urinary tract infections. So excreted through the kidney uh, into inactive metabolites. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the chloramphenicol. The chloramphenicol is from the protein uh, synthesis inhibitors. So it inhibit protein synthesis in the bacteria. And it works on the 50S ribosomal subunit of the bacteria. So it work on uh, 50S uh, ribosomal uh, subunit in the bacteria and it inhibits protein synthesis through that and it is uh, bacteriostatic. Uh, it also inhibit protein synthesis in the human body cells but to a lesser degree uh, so inhibit protein uh, synthesis uh, in human cells and it might lead to a number of side effects one of them is bone marrow suppression or the most common one is the bone uh, marrow uh, suppression and that's why uh, it is not used or it is limited in use because of this uh, thing. For the spectrum of the chloramphenicol, it has a very broad spectrum. It works on the gram positives, uh, gram negatives, uh, anaerobes, and atypical microorganisms. Now let's talk about the resistance against the chloramphenicol. There is different resistance uh, modes developed by the bacteria against the chloramphenicol. One of them is modifying the chloramphenicol binding site, modifying uh, the binding site on the 50S. Also, there is the enzymatic inactivation of the chloramphenicol. And that's by enzyme called chloramphenicol acetyltransferase. So chloramphenicol acetyltransferase enzyme. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the chloramphenicol. The chloramphenicol is used, uh, has limited use first of all, but in general uh, it is used as a third or fourth line in treating atypical microorganisms infections. So atypical uh, microorganisms. Uh, those include the chlamydia, the legionella, the coxiella, the rickettsia, the boreella, and the other ones. It is also used as a third or fourth line uh, in, treating, in treating the typhoid fever uh, and the meningitis. And it is used as a topical formula in treating uh, eye infections. So eye infections uh, as a topical uh, formula 
uh, meningitis is third or fourth line so third fourth and this is also third or fourth finally let's talk about the adverse effects of the chloramphene call the first and the famous one is the bone marrow suppression bone uh, marrow suppression and it is on two types we have the mild reversible bone marrow suppression and that's dose dependent so occur with high doses of the chloramphene call and patients usually present with fatigue, fever, and sore throat. And you do CBC to the patient, and you find out that he, uh, that the patient have uh, bone marrow suppression. The other type of the bone marrow suppression that we have is the severe irreversible. So severe irreversible. The first type, the mild reversible, uh, you can, uh, after you, the patient stop taking the drug, the bone marrow is back to the normal. Uh, but with the severe irreversible, which is what we call the aplastic anemia, when you do uh, bone marrow aspiration, you find out that the uh, bone marrow is becoming uh, fatty tissue and this is a reversible type and the mortality is about uh, 50% with the bone marrow suppression normally it is treated by uh, fresh blood transfusions uh, corticosteroids immune modulators and bone marrow stimulation the other adverse effect of the chloramphene call is the gray baby syndrome the gray baby syndrome occur in kids less than two years because they have less ability for glucuronidation. So the chloramphene coal is not really metabolized in these kids and it would accumulate and lead to toxicity. And this includes the uh, affecting the human body cells and also affecting the bone marrow. Uh, and it would lead to the gray baby syndrome, meaning the baby become gray and cyanosed uh, and have irregular respirations and abdominal distension and might lead to CVS, cardiovascular collapse, and this might lead to death. Uh, and the mortality is 40% with the gray baby syndrome and there is no specific treatment. The treatment is only supportive. The chloramphene call also inhibit uh, the cytochrome P450 in the liver and this lead to less metabolism of the warfarin, phenytoin and the cyclosporin and some other drugs and those drugs might accumulate and lead to toxicity uh, also. Finally, let's talk about the contraindications uh, of the chloramphene call. So the chloramphene call is contraindicated in kids less than two years because it causes the gray baby syndrome. And it also contraindicated in the pregnancy and in lactation. And it is contraindicated in people who have blood diseases uh, and who have who are taking drugs that might suppress the, the bone marrow so in people who are taking drugs that uh, suppress uh, the bone marrow and with that we reach the end of this video thank you guys for watching please make sure you like and subscribe and see you in the next video peace